Hey Legionnaires, and welcome back. We're here in the world of Middle Earth once again. We have a glorious 3v3 siege battle for you today. And today we have a bit of a dwarven civil war in this one as we are battling at M and Arn in here with the new maps that came in the update. And we do have a glorious 3v3 with the last breath mod uh some mod on as well. So we do have the new Umbar faction also being played today, and they'll be joining Mordor. And I believe also Erebor on the attack in this one. So yeah, we have one of the Dwarven factions on this side. We have Moro and Umbar as well over on this uh, on this assault here. And then on the defense, we have the Elves of Enladris. We have the Dwarves of the Iron Hills. And finally, as we saw, we have the Uruks of Isengard. So both sides getting a bit of a mix of good and evil in this one here. And we've got Berserkers that are actually waiting on the walls for these Uruk throng. And... Yeah, I don't think these Orc Throng are getting through, to be honest, but they're also floating on the wall, which is uh, a bit weird. I'm not going to lie to you there, but here they go. These Orcs having no issues getting off the walls, and they're going to sw help swamp these Berserkers, which is a small unit. But they are elite. They're tier 4, so these guys should be able to carve through a fair few of these uh, these Orc Throng. And also, shocking victory on a wall always excels. And we have Urukai Raiders up here as well, dealing with the Uruk Throng. I don't know where they've killed as many of the uh, Uruks, uh, sorry, the Urukai, but um, the Uruks have certainly lost a lot to Arch Towers, I think. That is the, uh, the case. We've also got um, some dwarves now landing on the walls over here. We've got arable Axes landing up here, dealing with some uh, supply barrels. And yeah, it looks like more arable Axes landing. We're also seeing a breach being opened right now. Erebor is using an Onager to open up this, uh, this defense here. This uh, fort wall is going to be brought down. And then uh, there's going to be a breach made. And you can see Dwarven Company already being set up to go through along with Erebor Axe Guards as well there. It looks like there are some Dwarves already getting off the wall. Like, only a couple. Like, not the end of the world. But just so you know, they are actually already rushing off this wall, are uh, the Dwarves. Over on this side, though, it does seem as though Umbar has also landed. He's actually sitting in this uh, command unit first, which is like a cultist unit. It's called the Ang Agnalo or something like that. I probably a butchering the name. They look like cultists. Uh, I think they are, to be honest. They give like a load of morale and melee buffs to other units. So really, they shouldn't be being sent in. First in as well. Not a good idea. But they um, they remind me of like that um, that, that cult in uh, Game of Thrones, which I'm trying to remember the name of them now. But they're in like um, the ones that Daenerys fights in, like, Mar in Marine. Someone could tell me the name, I'd be very, like, that would really help. But yeah, they, they kind of remind me of those. They really do. They're already losing, though. Uh, I mean, they are medium command. They're not that great. Only command unit, I know that's uh, a infantry unit, though. A little bit of a bit of knowledge there for you. We do have Umbar Usurpers here already ramming down the gate. They have uh, lost a fair few troops, but they're well chevron of these guys. So they should be able to put up a decent fight against the elves who are have brought lots of nasty shock infantry. And yeah, these guys... Well, actually, maybe not. To be honest, I don't know if these Silver Chevrons are going to be enough because these Umbar Usurpers here are fighting on the wall, already losing to Imladris. So clearly, it's going to be pretty tough going. I imagine they've got Elrond as their general. Uh, that's the White Hand. Uh, Stormers. Where is Elrond? I presume they brought him. Yeah, Elrond. Gold Chevron. Oh, my. And they've also put Elves up here on this... Um, on this hill. They can't actually see what's going on, these Noldorian archers, but they can fire over the side and they can support any fight going on here. Which will be excellent. And the breach has been opened over here. So a breach in the wall has been made and the pikes are already going in along with uh, some Urukai infantry support. I mean, it's only Dwarven Company. They should really be able to knock these guys back. They're a levy infantry unit. They're not that great. They are losing, in fact. But yeah, this is a... a like, a fairly large one. I mean, they started with 7,400 attackers against 5,300 defenders. They're now down to 5,100. So they lost a, a couple of hundred, and the uh, defenders have lost about 600 troops already. Yeah, Dwarven Company already on the retreat. Probably for the best. They're going to need to bring up some archers or some crossbows or something to just try and get rid of these Urukai pikes. But yeah, the battle for the wall... Really getting underway now. Uruk's actually managing to uh, get back onto this wall. You might have seen earlier that they were being pushed off by Erebor. They're now back on it, and they've got Berserkers here leading the way. As they're after some Dwarven flesh. They're sick of man flesh. They want something a little more spicy. I don't know why I think Dwarven flesh would be spicy, but maybe it is. Maybe it's not. 
got trolls as well waiting. Balance power is way in favor of the uh, of the attackers, which kind of makes sense. The defenders have got a dwarven player, and they also have a uh, an elven player. So the numbers aren't really with them, but they have helped route two units of Uruk throng. This is a big win here for the Urukai. Defeating their old ally. Yeah, they're mopping these guys up. And I mean, they're just going to run into the Uruk infantry as well. So they're going to just get a load of free kills there. That's that's really nice. But, I mean, your balance power also is probably massively in favor of, uh, of the attackers. Because they do have the trolls on their side. And these do influence the balance power quite a lot. And they also... Uh, don't win any sort of prizes for beauty contests because they do look ugly. But yes, Umbar, the new faction in Last Breath is making some pushes now. I mean, they can bring unlimited amount of Umbar usurpers, which is one of the cool things they can do. Uh, along with a few of the very nasty infantry. It's a very infantry-heavy roster. We do have Garzim and Ladris, which is the, uh, the now a sword unit. And then we have the Noldorian Pikemen, which replace the, gar the old Garzim and Ladris. And they're both defending that gate there. Yeah, no units yet to be lost by the uh, defenders, it seems. They're not really... I haven't taken considerable losses yet. Some of the uh, Uruk units are dying. But uh, that's no surprise. They probably have the worst infantry out of the three. And that's being harsh on Isengard. Because Isengard's got solid infantry. I mean, these ones aren't. The Raiders are certainly trash. But, I mean, they've got pretty good solid heavy infantry. It's just that they're fighting alongside dwarves and elves. Uh, speaking of, I actually haven't seen any dwarves go into combat yet, but we are seeing dwarven axe infantry now being uh, pushed up. These are... They're down as... I think they're down as medium. Yeah, they're down as medium axe infantry. They're going in and shield wall. But yeah, these guys are anything but, like, medium, really. They're, they're tough to kill. Dwarven Company coming for round two, though. I mean, the pikes aren't here now, so it might make it a little easier, and that might be why Erebor's made another assault here. But yeah, the wall's being fought for viciously by either side. We've got... Is that Dwarven Barret Guard already coming into the wall? I think it is. Yeah, I think that's Dwarven Barrett Guard already onto the wall here from Erebor. They're setting in their elite shock infantry already to try and clear out these Uruks. It's a bold move. That's what it looks like, yeah. Oh no, these are Erebor Axe Guards. I was going to say, they look very much like Barrett Guard, but they're not. Because it's not quite there in most elites. Just a mid-tier unit. They have the same, like, armor as the Erebor Axe Guard. They're very similar, and like the uh, the guy with his cloak look, looks like them. I wonder if they have all the Barrett Guard. In fact, yeah, they have. They are back here. A bit of a difference, I'm sure. I'm just probably chatting rubbish. Yeah, they, they do kind of look the same. But they just got blue capes. Every single one of them is a blue cape. But there you go. How am I forgetting these things? I mean, I play this game so often, or this mod so often, I should know what units look like. Black Haven Sentry's coming up. So a pole army unit coming up. Maybe to go through the gate. Maybe they think that's going to be the way to unlock this defense. I'm not sure it is, though. Um, certainly, pole arms versus pikes, they won't have the range. Also, uh, the elven pikes are probably very much superior, um, I can imagine. Certainly, it's going to be a tough assault here for Umbar because uh, well, he's having to go over walls and fight shock infantry, which excels on walls. Uh, or he goes through a gate, which is defended by pikemen. And he's also fighting elves, which just to make the whole situation worse. But yeah, these guards and ladders are up here. They're being joined by Noldorian swords. So they are going to probably clear these guys out pretty nicely. And these, uh, there's a bit of an Umbar sandwich going on right now. These usurpers just get squished between two nasty uh, sword units there. And we now have a bit of a victory being formed here in this choke point. Urukai infantry and also some dwarven axe infantry. But you can see that Mordor now is trying to use his Uruk archers. Shooting inside of the Urukai infantry, trying to uh, route these guys so that uh, he can go through the choke point. We also have some archers that got onto the wall that have been routed. I think they're mortals by the looks of it, but uh, yeah, I think they, yeah, they're mortal archers that went onto the uh, onto the wall and have been murdered by the dwarves. So that is unfortunate. But yeah, certainly the uh, defenders are giving their units on the walls a lot of support, whether it's archer fire, whether it's uh, like more units. 
they provide him. You can see here, I mean, these Urukite Raiders actually holding on for a lot longer than I thought. They're taking on Dwarven infantry. Up here as well, I mean, there's some incredible angles for the, uh, for the Isengard uh, range units here. I mean, they can just shoot down from here, and they can just lob their shots over and hit the units coming up the, uh, up the ladders, which is always uh, a good use. These crossbows, I feel like, are, yeah, not really in range. They have a smaller range, and they definitely probably will need to get a little bit closer, maybe on a wall. Urukai, uh, sorry, Uruk Throng, they're getting killed off. That's unfortunate. Orcs versus Oryx. What a way for it to go. So yeah, now let's have a look. Balance of power. 4,700 against 5,300. So not looking great, that's for sure. You can see here that the uh, Oryx are getting focused down by the archers. This is not a good sign. They're going to need to bring up some fresh troops because the Dwarven Company is back for round three. Another assault on that defense there. Uh, yeah, Umbar really struggling over here as well. I'll just show you this. You can see, as I predicted, the uh, sentry's not doing so great. Neither the Umbar usurpers. The guards and lads are a bit just too damn nasty. And the pikes, maybe push, pike push forward a little bit, but they are kind of just about in range. But yeah, they should hold this gate for a while. This is, like I said, it's just a problem. What they really need to do, bring up archers and try and shoot along the wall to try and shoot uh, combats that they are in and see whether they can uh, influence the fight, maybe defeat the, uh, like the shock infantry on the walls that way. Also, the attackers. Oh! The attackers. They, they killed this unit off here, but they haven't decided to flank around these dwarven axe infantry. They missed, certainly missed an opportunity. A Dwarven Civil War going on. So much Dwarven blood will be shed this day. We've got trolls moving up as well. So they look, they're about to go in. Maybe do some work. So I don't know what happened. Maybe I guess like Erebor like... With the defeat of, uh, defeat of their armies at Erebor. Maybe like Erebor Dwarves that still alive decided to swear fealty to Sauron or something. And the Iron Hill ones refused. That's why there's like a Civil War going on. I don't know. Always a weird. Always got to think of with your imagination what's gone on. These dwarves here, though, they're cutting through the, uh, cutting through the oryx as they should. These uh, veterans of Erid Mithrin. Yeah, winning slightly. They're killing a lot of these uh, these orcs who are starting to waver. In fact, they're actually were threatening the rear of these dragon slayers here, which have silver chevrons, but. Um, not anymore, put it like that. The uh, the orcs have been dealt with. Uh, really, I'll be getting these uh, arable crossbows, and I'll be starting to shoot through that gap at the Iron Hills and just everything behind that. Because these guys, uh, these guys are wavering. Oh no, that's the uh, the uh, orcs. Sorry, I was like, why are the orcai from wavering? They're, they're just fine. Yeah, orcai wavering here for. Uh, for the attackers, but yeah, those crossbows, if they get them in there, there's such a large grouping of infantry. You definitely get a lot of kills there. Trolls now in here, though. Mordor has already committed this trolls. Let's see how well these guys do. They're going to start swinging, boys, left, right, and center. I mean, it's a good unit to try and break through these pikes. You can see they are losing decisively. Trolls are pretty well designed for dealing with pikes. But they will suffer a lot of damage as well. A lot more by usurpers dying here. It looks like we're going to see Aramithra and veterans coming up from the dwarves. So they're setting up infantry on this side. And Aduna Kora as well. Which are one of the nastiest shock infantry units in the game. Yeah. 
but have the defenders still got any ammo? Yeah, still have still an Dorian Archer ammo. Well, they actually have a lot of Noldorian Archer ammo left. Uh, because they might need it for those Adrun and Kori. They are going to be a real problem for the attacks on that wall. Those big, great hand swords. Uh, great double handed swords. They're going to get all the kills. We have trolls down at eight. They've lost two. But they've nearly killed off this entire garrison here defending this gate. Look at the troll, he's just like, Ooh, splat. Oh, he, didn't even hit, he didn't even commit in the end, he didn't even want to splat someone. What a shame. Over on this side here, you can see as well that uh, evil has got off. The dwarves still battle on against the... Uh, Urux. We've only seen one like one little engagement between like low tier units over the Dwarven Civil War. I thought we were gonna maybe see dwarves counter dwarves. The tell me there's a second oh, I was gonna say I hope there was not a second unit in here, but they really need to get a move on. Does uh there's Mordor because he's just standing in that choke point, just getting shot to pieces. And there you go, Cavalry's inside. So it's the eye, they're getting involved. They've got some Iron Swordsmen over here, or Iron Hill Warriors do the, uh, the Iron Hills, and they're going to help them mess these, uh, this cavalry up. Back on this side here, Umbar still not really making much progress and he's starting to lose his elites. Now it's actually not even Umbar, it's uh, Erebor here that's traded some troops over. Erebor veterans starting to get shot up by uh, Noldorian archers. He needs to be careful of that. Um, but yeah, Shock Infantry might be the way to go though in, uh, in trying to get get off this wall. Dorven Barrett Guard in here as well, winning decisively against Noldorian Pikemen. You don't see that very often. I'm surprised that this is happening to be honest, the pikes keep the uh, infantry at range. Yeah, just keep on poking boys, keep on poking. Guards and ladders going back in, they did a pretty good combo earlier. Another troll unit inside now. This other troll unit is still alive but very banged up right now. If you were an elf or a dwarf, how would you like to explain to your comrades like, so, we're now friends of Imladris, so actually, we're kind of with the bad guys. Then mortals be like the opposite, they'll be like, kind of just eyed with like a load of good people. Am I not technically the good guy? Well, the trolls have broken through, and they've, they've already lost three of them because they've charged all the way in, and these uh, archers and crossbows are focused them down. So I don't think that Olokai is getting as many kills as some other ones might do. And I'm losing control of my camera. Got well, mansion reclaimers now on the walls. So they've got some really nasty shock infantry being sent up. And still. Isaac got battles for these walls because White and Storm is here now, so we're seeing Battle of Elites going in. How much have they got in the way of reserves outside? Not much. They're kind of rushing everything inside of the attacks on the side. Arable Axe Throw is getting inside. It's good to see. They're going to need all their crossroads and all their archers and stuff inside. Try and support this fight where they can. The general looks like he's going to go in and try and support the uh, the trolls as a bar. And yeah, he's trying to uh, 
so is trying to save the, uh, the trolls. You don't see that very often. What we got back here? We got Iron Hill Warriors, Pelagays, not Pelagays, not Pelagays. Um, why was I thinking Pelagays? Sorry, Elrond's still here. So yeah, we got Elrond. We've got Iron Hill Warriors. We've got Urukai Archers, Noldorian Archers. Still got a Day Nine for here. I don't know why I was thinking Pelagay Marines. I guess oh, I've got no clue. But this is a problem. Umbar's just blobbing up in this damn gate here, and this is not helping him at all. Look at that. Maybe that's why I was thinking of Pelagids, because the Pelagids and the uh, Umbar Usurpers are very similar. Umbar Usurpers not getting through, though. Neither of these Blackhaven sentries. They can fight here all day long. They're just going to mount up bodies in that gate. Also looks like they've been pushed back onto the, uh, onto the wall. Have the attacks here. We now have Alpharazan's Asgard, the elite swords of Umbar going in. Harking back to the days of Numenor here. Tower's been destroyed. I didn't think you could destroy them. Oh, they've captured the gates. They actually have managed to do it. The uh, the trolls. I don't know. Is that another troll unit? I, I feel like you might be one of the ones over here. Came out of combat and tried to rear charge these spears. I mean, they've nearly killed these iron guards off, actually. Uh, and also, I imagine that might have helped with the towers collapsing. And the general has fallen. That is a problem. Whose general died? Mordor's general is dead. Okay, so Mordor's morale might be in tatters now. That is a real problem. He's trying to make a break. Did they try to charge through here? There's dragon slays and stuff here. Yeah, there's definitely cav like some of the eye losses there. That was a really strange move. Iron Hill Warriors still battling here against, uh, it looks like some archers. We still have ammo, these Dwarven Range Travelers going in. And Erebor Halberdiers have flanked around here. And they're actually outflanking all of these uh, Iron Hill units here. Iron Hill Warriors getting flanked and stabbed in the back. But now the Halberdiers are about to have the same medicine. And they're going to get rear charged in the game. Hacked and slashed out by Elven Sabres. Hold the line, dwarves! Keep poking away. Got a catapult in there. I don't know why they bothered wheeling it in. Uh, does it have like one round left? I think maybe. It's gonna try and fire, but it's about to get overwhelmed here by Noldorian archers. Really well observed there by the Imladris player, seeing that this uh, Onager come in and it wasn't really well protected at all. I mean, they're throwing in what they have left, and it really just doesn't have a lot left in it. A lot of the troops actually are like kind of stuck outside the wall, or was outside the gate because there's iron like, iron guard here. Which is just holding on. Servants of the Eye, like, attacking in the back lines here. Trying to help break these guys. See reinforcements going into crossbows with our ammo, trying to also influence that fight. Attack the guards, guards the teeth. But yeah, it does seem as though... It does seem as though, like, Umbar over here is kind of being a little screwed. It's not the easiest place to attack. But uh, I feel like he didn't bring the right sort of weapons to the job, maybe. Certainly, I mean, he needed to get his arch on the wall after he took the wall, so he could then try and just shoot down onto the elves, force them back. It's not easy when you're playing Umbar and you've got very limited in the way of range. Our men have given up and are running for their lives. 
I guess I could have always asked for a loan of uh, like um, uh, not Umbar, sorry, um, Mordor or Erebor archers. I was going to call them Numenor. So like, that's not right. That's the, that's literally the faction that, well, basically the faction that uh, I'm trying to say needed help. We've got Day 9 Foot now going in. He's trying to support this fight here. Who's he trying to kill? Oh, there's a general here. Barlin's over here. I can see Barlin. He's nearly in the front lines. He's fighting some fellow dwarves, killing dwarves. There's Dane. I don't know whether Dane's going to get any kills, but always worth a go. Erebor spear guard battling on. I think they might have routed, but I'm not sure. But it looks like Barlin's also routed, so that's going to cause a lot of morale issues here for the dwarves. Erebor halberdiers starting to, uh, to. Well, they're already losing, to be honest. Yeah, Erebor spear guards dying. Guards of the teeth. Still being outflanked, but they actually managed to hold on. I think they've actually. Yeah, they've gone back to back. It's a good tactic. It's got one guard's teeth pushing that way, the other one holding its ground here, holding off the, uh, the Isengard reinforcements which are coming in. With their wicked pole arms. They really do have an awful looking blade. Awful in a good way. I'm just saying. It's like, it's very Mordor-ish. I think, oh, is it ally has fled? I don't know who that is that's fled then. Maybe just some defender units? I really don't know. I th thought I heard, oh, if ally's dead. I was thinking of these uh, pole arms. Well, they were just about to give up anyway. But no, it was in fact the Isengard crossbows that were the ones to break. Oh, Frozen Asgard down here. Still battling away, still healthy as well. Those elven archers being peppering units on the walls. And that's probably also helped massively in their combat. So why you got to get your own archers on the walls when you get the chance? Because then you can just kind of... Return the favor. Yeah, these guys here. I mean, they should. I think they should beat these Orcs. I feel like our oh, friends as guys probably one of the best swords around. I mean, he's the general, so maybe I don't know. Maybe not because he's got some boosts, etc. They can use. Look at that sight. I mean, these guys look gorgeous, these Blackhaven sentries. They look like a... They're a gorgeous-looking unit. They're still fighting in here. They're not, they've really not got far. They have actually managed to get off the wall over here. Blackhaven's marksmen literally have landed on an undefended wall. And they're going to, I guess, try and shoot these guards and lads in the back. Along with the uh, the Noldorian pikemen. Don't think it's really going to achieve much. They're nearly out of troops. Um, both sides down to about a thousand men each. But uh, that's never a good sign. When you're playing against an elven and a dwarven defender. And you're, and you're Mordor. And probably Mordor does have most of the troops left. Weirdly, even though he's lost his general. This is actually dead. There you go. I think those... Uh, since the ice starting to break, that is actually... Causing, yeah, that's causing Mordor to mass right, I think. Mordor, I think, has been dealt with. And all of a sudden, your yeah, balance power is going to be very different now. Yeah, it's now 1,400 against 500. And it is just Umbar's uh, remaining few troops that are left. It's got some Blackhaven marksmen over here. It's a lot of ammo. I don't know why they haven't gotten into a, onto a wall or something like that. We've got the other Blackhaven marksmen I've seen. It's getting rushed now by guards from Ladris. Trying to get some point blank shots. Archers here filling the elven shields with arrows. It's doing no good. Surprised they haven't broken yet. 
Army losses have got to be coming into effect soon on this Umbar army, I would have thought. Uh, we've got a Dune Nikori. We've got all sorts, I think, in there. Just like... Yeah, I mean, you've got the, um, the Balkumag Balkumagan as well in there. There's just so many Umbar units just stuck in this gap here. Imagine if oil was dropping onto all those uh, Umbar troops. They kill hundreds. We've got now double stacking spears here. My gosh, they really are going hard on that uh, Umbar unit. And there you go. A Pyrrhic victory for uh, the for the dwarves of Erebor. No, of the Iron Hill, sorry. Not the Erebor. Definitely not uh, of of the Iron Hills. Um, but yeah, this was sent in by Skull Amarok, who was playing as uh, the Dwarves of the Iron Hills. So thank you very much for sending it in, Skull. Um, he had on his side his uh, Holy Banana, and he also had LP24, who were playing as the Defenders. So we'll have a quick look at their score. So um, Skull getting 272 kills with his Dane Iron Foot, Sons of the Mountain there. Then we have 263 with his Warriors of Erid Mithran. Uh, his Iron Guards getting 108 kills. His crossbow is getting 124, 117. Not too bad for them. Then we have Banana here, who was taking on, um, he was taking on Umbar. Got a lot of kills with his Elven troops. All of them getting like over 100 kills by the looks of it. Uh, Elrond getting 135 kills. His guards of Imladris getting 116, 214. Then his shock infantry here getting 165, 230. The pikes getting 242 kills. Uh, one did get 39, but it's still healthy. I think this one just never saw combat. And then um, he's got Noldorian Archer here with 209 kills, 189 kills. Yeah, the other two doing really well as well. And then we have LP24 playing as Isengard. Took the brunt of the attack, to be honest, and did lose most of his men. But he did do a good job with some certain units. Um, 155 kills with Uruk Infantry. 248 with another one here. Uh, and then he's got 248 kills with his... Berserkers, 200, uh, 206 with his other Berserker unit. His Urukai Archers getting 105 kills, 146 kills. And the Crossbows getting 166 to round them up there. And then we have our Abrazan getting, um, playing as Erebor. Did an okay job, 78 kills as Erebor Axe Guards. Uh, Erebor Axe Warriors getting 111 kills, 113. Oh, his Erebor from Veterans and Barrett Guard really had a rough day. That is sad to see. Um, his Halberdiers getting... Uh, 97 kills, and his two wardens, 97 kills. But his uh, axe row is getting 187, so not too bad for them. And then we have MB playing as Mordor, uh, 105 kills with the Uruk throng here, 189 kills with his guards, the teeth, 234 kills with the Uruk archers, 214 with another one here. These Uruk archers actually did bits, another one also getting into the hundreds, 176 kills with the uh, servants of the eye here, and then one of his trolls getting just over 100 kills. Uh, so yeah, not really the greatest of investment, unfortunately, today. Then we have uh, Nuno Ravez here playing as Umbar. So the final player here had a bit of a rough game, assaulting against that Elven line. And I don't know how many of his units really have actually got over 100 kills. 59 kills here with the Aduna Nakori. But yeah, really rough day there for Umbar. That is a, a battle to f forget for him. But there you go, guys. That is today's Siege Battle. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.